Welcome to Huff Goes to the Movies. My name is Eric Huffman II. Most people call me Huff. Some people know that I love going to the movies. Shazam! Fury of the Gods is in theaters now. Billy Batson, who is now uh, about to be 18 years old, is trying to overcome the fear of what it means of aging out of the foster system. He is also trying to find a way to sort of manage his entire superhero family. And in the midst of that, he finds himself having to go up against the Daughters of Atlas, played by Helen Mirren and Lucy Liu. They are attempting to get the magic back that was stolen from their father by the wizard, who, of course, granted Billy Batson the powers to become Shazam. I think that the first Shazam film really was a breath of fresh air at the time, especially for the DC Extended Universe. This was not an overly self-serious, moody exploration of superheroes. This was a fun, whimsical story about a child becoming a superhero. It was basically big with Tom Hanks combined with Superman, or I guess in a more modern sense, Sam Raimi's Spider-Man. It definitely had that sense of, let's just have fun. This is the greatest thing ever. I have superpowers now. I can fly. I have super strength, super speed. I can shoot lightning from my hands. And it lent itself to something that could appeal to a younger audience. And I think that when you have characters from the world of DC Comics especially, I think it's important for them to retain a bit of that appeal for a younger audience. And while some people felt that this meant that you shouldn't take Shazam seriously, I think that it actually works as just a good old-fashioned origin story. I think the film had a lot of heart. I think the film carried through on its themes very well. And while the film may not have had quite the budget of something like Aquaman or Batman versus Superman, I think that the film delivered in its action scenes and I think that it was an entertaining time. Director David F. Sandberg was coming off of two smaller horror films at the time that he was hired to direct Shazam. And I think that he did a really good job. I think that he showed a real knack for how to handle character-driven stories that also do deal with a bit of spectacle. But because the first film had a relatively smaller budget compared to other superhero films at the time, I think that the film only teased some of the fantasy that a character like Shazam can lend itself to on the big screen. With Shazam! Fury of the Gods, we definitely get a large helping of that fantasy. The Daughters of Atlas inhabit a magical realm that is sort of separate from ours, and we do spend a lot of time there. We do spend a lot of time with mythical, magical creatures. There's a scene that involves children riding unicorns and fighting monsters, and Shazam himself has to fight a dragon at several points in the movie. And I think that while this film had the leeway to go bigger because of the success of the first one, I also think that that might have been part of its downfall. Shazam! Fury of the Gods ultimately was a disappointment for me. While I do love these characters and they are just, you know, so well written and the, the actors portraying them really are pitch perfect both as their childlike selves and as their superhero selves, uh, the only difference being that the actress who plays Mary as a young adult also plays her in superhero form. But overall, while I do love these characters and I want to root for them, and I think that they are given a pretty formidable foe in the form of Helen Mirren and Lucy Liu, I just feel like this movie is really two separate ideas that are awkwardly placed together. There is sort of the continuation of Billy Batson trying to become more sure of himself, trying to battle imposter syndrome, um, trying to reconcile with the fact that now that he has a family, as he's getting older, he's going to have to deal with the fact that there's going to be some distance with this family. He has a foster sister that wants to go away to college, and he has siblings that now that they have superpowers want to be able to operate on their own, and he's trying to be the person that keeps it all together. But then there's also this super fantasy world, magical monsters and evil people part of the equation that just doesn't really fit. And it's not even to say that those things are bad. I am actually impressed with what David F. Sandberg was able to do now with a bit of a bigger budget and a bigger scope. The action scenes, the cinematography, the the production design for the fantastical realms. All of that is really impressive. Even the scenes with the magical creatures and the dragon. Compared to the first film, 
it really does feel like the filmmaking from David F. Sandberg and his production team here has really gone up. I mean, it was something to, to really just sort of sit back and marvel at, uh, no pun intended, of course. I was actually thoroughly impressed with the scale that they attempted to capture with this film. However, I think that in attempting to go bigger, it sacrificed the heart of the story that made that first film feel so special. And while Shazam from 2019 may not register on the radar of transcendent comic book films, especially when you look at the fact that it came out just a few weeks prior to Avengers Endgame, I think that that first film had the right amount of heart and character to make it one that is one of the essential origin stories in this genre. But Shazam! Fury of the Gods feels like something that is just bigger for no reason. And maybe not even for no reason, but it just feels like they knew they could do a lot more things here, but they didn't stop to ask if they should. I really do think that where you really feel some of the burden in this film is in its pacing, especially as you get into the second act as characters are sort of dispersed in different places. Uh, and when you get into the third act where things are just turning into a CGI fest, as they often do in superhero films, I just think that while this film does try to retain that family element, that heart that the first film had, it just gets lost in the shuffle here. And that's before we even <laughs> factor in the way that the villains are used in the story. Helen Mirren, Lucy Liu, I mean, who's going to complain? And shout out to David F. Sandberg for tapping into his horror roots, just like he did in the first Shazam. I think that he actually doubles down on that here. He really leans into trying to make these villains seem intimidating, threatening, frightening. They just feel so awkwardly placed in the plot of this film. There are just moments that feel a little choppy, a little rushed. Certain story beats feel a little underdeveloped. And overall, while this film is not an abomination, it's not a train wreck by any means, I just think that it's a film that went a little too big for its own good. Or I suppose I should say, it's a film that was a little too ambitious for its own good. And I want films to be ambitious. I want filmmakers to take material like this and to lean into all the potential that it has to be mined. But when you have actresses like Helen Mirren and Lucy Liu as your villains, you're definitely gonna wanna lean into that. You're gonna want them to, you know, try to chew up the scenes as much as you can. And they definitely do that here. I do like them as the villains here but they just feel awkwardly placed here. It just feels like this film is conflicted about what the actual story is, what the actual core of its narrative is supposed to be. We want to root for Billy. We want him to, you know, sort of figure things out. Absolutely. We also want big superhero action. And I think that while it was great to see the family get their powers in the first film, and it's great to see them sort of put that into action to start the film, I do think that the fact that all of these characters are superheroes now, it does make the film feel a little scattershot. It does sort of give the film a little bit of an imbalance about where to place its focus when it needs to go big and go for spectacle. So overall, Shazam! Fury of the Gods is a disappointment. It is a step down from the first film, but I do applaud David F. Sandberg and this team for wanting to go bigger given the success that the first film had with a relatively modest budget. Overall, with the performances, they're still endearing, they're still charming, and while I don't know what the future of the DC Universe holds for this specific group of characters, if James Gunn and Peter Safran want to continue telling the story of Shazam and the Shazam family, I would be interested to see how they fit alongside the likes of characters like Batman, Superman, The Flash, Aquaman, Green Lantern, the Creature Commandos even, because apparently we are getting a Creature Commando series. But if this is the end of Shazam on the big screen, at least this iteration of Shazam on the big screen, then, you know, at least you got one really good origin story out of it. And you got a film in the sequel that has some fun moments, but just doesn't quite gel. So overall, if I had to give Shazam! Fury of the Gods a rating, I would give it a two and a half out of five stars. But that's just me. I'm sure lots of people are gonna go into this film and have a blast, especially younger viewers. I think this is really sort of catered to a younger audience. And even though I can be a bit of a man-child, it just didn't quite connect for me. 
But I want to hear from you guys. What did you think of Shazam! Fury of the Gods? Have you seen it yet? Are you interested? What were your thoughts on the first film? Where do you rank it amongst the other DC Extended Universe films? Jump down in the comments, join me there, let me know. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you have not already, please do subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon. That way you can stay up to date on everything that I've got going on here. Once again, my name is Eric Huffman II. Most people call me Huff. Stay sweaty, my friends. I will see you at the movies. Peace.